Welcome to Choices, a production of First Assembly of God, Ellen P. Durban Street, Workmanville. We are so pleased and privileged that you've joined us, and we want to encourage you to gather your family members around as we view Choices this evening. God bless you. We welcome you again to this important program of Choices. We're glad that you take time off to tune in to us this week. We want to encourage you to stay tuned to us and listen to the servants of God as we expound from the Word of God. We want to encourage you to exercise your franchise and let go out and vote on Monday because we are all sons of one mother. The same blood runs through us. Stay tuned. Invite a friend. Let them know that the program is on. God bless you. You know, in the book of Genesis, we see God establishing the family, um, the church, and the state. So clearly, God has a hand in the state. Every nation has certain symbols of nationhood. And some of these may include the national flag, the national pledge, the national anthem, etc. Today we want to examine one of our most important symbols of nationhood, and that is our national anthem. This symbol tells us that we are a people, um, a people with one objective, one goal, and clearly when we examine the words in this particular um, anthem, we get the impression that the writer knew something about God. So we want to examine the national anthem. Dear land of Guyana, of oh, rivers and plains, gentlemen. Permit me to read the first stanza of our national anthem. Dear land of Guyana, of rivers and plains, made rich by the sunshine and lush by the rain, set gem like a fair between mountains and sea. Your children salute you, dear land of the free. Incidentally, in this first stanza, what stands out to me is said gem, like, and fear. It comes to mind a jeweler setting a gem in a piece of gold. It calls for skillful and deliberate placement. And I see Guyana as a nation being skillfully and deliberately placed in a position that the world can see her beauty and splendor and come to admire her as a nation. You know, on our beautiful west coast, that uh, most of us coastlanders hardly get a chance to appreciate the, the tremendous imposing mountains we have um, there and the sea that we have on the other side. Um, and this uh, Archibald Leonard Luther, uh, the one who wrote this anthem, captured that, the beauty of our nation. And um, it's a wonderful celebration of, the, of, the, of, the, of this country in 1966 when we became an independent nation. And perhaps sometimes or very many times we we forget these lofty and high ideals mm -hmm. and like we go back to the book of Genesis where we see when God was setting up creation structures he made a place the first institution he set up was the family the second institution incidentally was the state when when Cain, Cain killed his blood, brother Abel and, and uh, we have the account here wonderfully stated in Genesis chapter 4 and God instituted the whole justice, you know, accountability, and um, and, and 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 this this is reiterated the whole notion of the state as, as the second a very important institution of, of of government. God said in in Genesis chapter nine we have another account of of um, Noah and his sons coming off the ark, and God made it clear, spelling out in greater detail the whole question about accountability a man being accountable for his actions, even animals being accountable. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this invisible institution that we now understand 
Yeah, it was the Creator who put that in place. And as we come to the end of, uh, of, of chapter 4, um, we, we see God setting up um, an institution that perhaps is not as recognized as it should be. It is called the church. And um, men began, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. And this is long before the Greek concept of the ecclesia, the call out one. This is in the book of Genesis. All three very important pillars of society were placed. Now, on Monday, in our country, we are going to, or we are demanded, it is demanded of us, that we exercise our civic duty to vote. And um, this is the way how things are done in a democratic environment, where each citizen is given this right to participate in the decision making of the country, to determine who will, will govern. And that is sovereign, that is your choice. And we hope that all of you will exercise your choice. I intend to exercise mine. And um, in this context, as you do so, this vision of Guyana, that's why we're reminding you of it. It was drawn to my attention many years ago by a Jamaican who said to me, your anthem is beautiful. And he took, he went through verse by verse. And I couldn't believe it. Just sang it without paying attention. Your children salute you, dear land of the free. As we exercise our right, we must think about this. Greenland of Guyana, our heroes of yore. We have hero heroes. But perhaps it, we are one of the very few countries we, we don't really celebrate our heroes the way we ought to. You know, you know, countries they celebrate their heroes. America just built a monument to one of the heroes, contemporary heroes, and they, and um, this was a big thing there. Both bondsmen and free laid their bones on your shore. We have a history of sacrifice. We have a rich history yeah. of people laying their life down yeah, yeah. Um, for us to enjoy what we are enjoying today. And I like how uh, Mr. Luca captured this. Both, both, both bondsmen and free lay their bones on your shore. This soil they so hallowed. And from them are we all sons of one mother, Guyana the free. All sons. All of us. So wh where we have come from yeah. in this country? You know, it, it is not by accident, I believe, we are the only English-speaking country in South America. I believe God is the one who set the bounds of our habitation. And the same God who made the rivers, as, we, as was clearly stated out in the first stanza, the same God who made the sun, the mountains, the sea, it's the same God who set our habitation. And in Psalm 33 verse 12 it says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people He has chosen as His own inheritance. We are chosen by God. And so, like the third line says, set gem like and fair between mountains and sea. We are a special people. In, in Acts chapter 17, Paul made this tremendous address that I love to refer to. In verse 24 he said, The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. He didn't stop there. In verse 26 he said, From one man he made all nations. And Guyana is a part of this. And uh, we have a right to be there as a nation that they should inhabit the whole earth and he marked out their appointed times in history so you're never born at the wrong time mm -hmm. they, they, the God of the universe determined yes. that Anthony Semple be born when he was born that Raphael Messiah be born when he was born yes. that all the political leaders yes. uh, should be born the time they were born God set that out and not just the times in history and the boundaries of their lands. That's why you must respect boundaries. And, 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 and he set those things in place. 
God did this so that they could seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far from any one of us so the whole purpose of nations is to find, seek God yeah. 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 and um, I believe the, the, the gentleman who set in place this anthem they had a concept that we were not the final human beings we were not the final arbiters of ourselves and of this nation that there is a power greater far greater than ourselves mm -hmm. and we are to submit to him we are to respect him and even as we conduct our business as we must on Monday we do so not only looking to the, not the international observers but recognizing that there is a sovereign God yeah, yeah. and therefore we must conduct ourselves in, in, in a manner that is worthy of his honor is of his respect and therefore as sons of one mother how, how can sons of one mother fight you know and, 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 and hurt each other and say terrible things about each other your sons we are all sons you might look different but we are all sons of one mother you know the we, we have a responsibility as you rightfully said we have a responsibility to conduct mm -hmm. ourselves in such a way that we will see the advancement and the development of our nation and even as we examined um, earlier it was positive that this nation was boarded out of sacrifice and, and struggles um, Guyana did not just happen um, in the evolution process of Guyana we saw um, lots of persons um, give their lives for this nation so that we could reach the state that we are at now and it would be remiss of us to, to, to do things that will really cause a disintegration, that will really cause the nation to, to go into a state of, of darkness. And look what it says here, both bondsmen and free, lay their bones on your shore. <laughs> um, lay their bones on your shore. This soil, this soil so they hallow. And from them are we so uh, clearly, we are the descendants of these yeah. people. And we have a responsibility to ensure that our nation do not go into a state of decadence because our, our forefathers, uh, all that they would have done if we move in that direction, we would, we would actually um, not make them very happy. Two reasons why I look for One, God placed me here. I have a right to be here and a right to ensure that Ghana moves the way it should move. And the second reason is that my four parents laid their blood for, for this land and uh, as a young man I build what my four parents would have done and so I encourage all that I need not just to go and vote but for us to see that we are sons of one mother and our, our, our intent should be to build upon all the adults I, I pray that you behave in such a manner that the children, your children will continue to salute you and bring honor and glory to the name of the Lord by the way you conduct yourself. And so I will go on vote on Monday morning, joyfully go on vote because I believe I have a right and a privilege to do so. What can we learn from this example given in the book of Genesis chapter 4? This is an encounter between two brothers. One was jealous. Um, of the other, the other's apparent success. Not listen to this. We will always find greater and lesser person than ourselves. You will always find that somebody might be able to eclipse you. Someone might be more advanced than you. Someone might be, oh, you know, weaker than you are. But it has a lot to do with this. The greatest government upon the face of the earth is self-government. Mm -hmm. We've got to learn how to control ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this is what we can learn from this, this incident here in Genesis 4 and, and, and verse 6. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. Mm. It desires to.